Good evening, everybody. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys may or may not have. Brian Schmidt, Orlando Sentinel, Rob. When Dwight left and you got the trade for Aaron, did re-signing JJ kind of become a, an issue at that point, given that you'd have a starting shooting guard making seven and a backup that could make more if you re-signed him? Was that really the crux of the issue that ended up JJ being traded? You know, Brian, I don't, I don't think the crux of the issue was that. I think, you know, as we evaluated all of our options leading up to the deadline and through the deadline, we made the deliberate decision to go ahead and make this move because we feel like it sets us in a direction that we're trying to go, which is to create something that's sustainable. So we... Uh, we didn't look at it quite like that. You know, we, we tried to evaluate everything fluidly from the beginning of the year up to this point and decided to make the decision that we did. Rob Lair over the West TV. Um, why was Milwaukee's deal the most attractive? And was it the only deal? And, and just walk us through that process. So we had a lot, of, um, a lot of dialogue, as all teams have this time of year. We, we must have talked to a dozen teams or so about different things um, and you know at, at the end of the day we liked the Milwaukee deal because we felt we were able to get back um, some players who address some needs for us we get some players who uh, we feel fit the timeline that we're trying to put together to, to create a, a competitive window um, and you know we felt like between Duran and Tobias and, and Baino um, you know, they addressed some needs that we felt we needed to address. Brian, Sarah, Magic Basketball Online. What's your message to the casual fan that doesn't understand these new players coming in, doesn't understand all the turnover in the team, that uh, sees just their favorite player, JJ, going out, and these new guys coming in from a casual perspective? You know, I guess my message would be that, you know, first and foremost, I understand the emotional uh, shockwave that you can feel when, someone you enjoy rooting for gets traded you know that's I think that's a natural response our job as a as a management staff is to try to remove that emotion as best we can and, and focus on decisions that we feel are in the best interest of the organization and you know with the landscape the way it is now and and, and the rules the way they are um, I think you have to be strategic and, and thoughtful and wise as to how you build your team as to how you spend your money. And we're trying to be uh, really methodical in deciding what that looks like. But, Rob, in a rebuild, when you're trying to clear cap room, are, are you saying that, that you guys would have brought J.J. back for 8 or $9 million and had two, had a backup shooting guard and a starting shooting guard making $16, $17 million? Yeah, you know, I think that that was part of part of the puzzle. You know, it's there are some inherent challenges when you look at the amount of money you have to spend on a team in, in certain positions. So um, I, I wouldn't say that was the only reason, but I think it was it was definitely a factor in our decision. Christian Brewer, WFTV. So would you call this with what JJ had been able to do over the last couple of years and the asking price? probably in the offseason would have been close to what Brian had mentioned. Was it an inevitable move that the Magic had to make with the process you guys are going through? You know, it was not inevitable. Um, you know, we we have a lot of respect for J.J. Redick. He's a heck of a player, and uh, more than that, he's a, he's a great person. He's incredibly professional and, and regimented in everything he does and, and he's a class act so it was not an easy decision for us by any means it was it was a hard decision and I'll be honest with you guys um, but you know when you look at it and you take all the different parts and, and you analyze what was available we felt like this was a deal we had to do to further the process of, of trying to create a, a competitive team that's going to be competitive for a long time. And we felt like this decision gives us another step in that direction. 
Um, Rob, Daniel Morales with the Valencia Voice. Uh, after this trade, if you exclude uh, Harrington and Turgulu, the team's average age is around 24. The trade opened up a little bit of cap room. Uh, is this going to be a sign of hopefully bringing in a uh, veteran in the offseason or going into the season after that? You know what? I don't know yet. I think that's a good question. We're going to have to continue to evaluate what opportunities exist. You know, one of the things that we're staying true to is being opportunistic. And that means if there's a free agent that makes sense for us, if there's a trade that makes sense for us, if there's a player in the draft that makes sense for us, we're going to we're going to try our best to uh, acquire that player. So I think it's a little bit early to determine exactly what age or what position will or won't be addressed in free agency, but uh, you can be assured that, that we'll do our due diligence on all fronts. Uh, Rob, procedurally, when did you decide that for sure you guys were going to pull the trigger on this uh, deal, and what was the conversation like with J.J.? So... We made the decision at about 2.56 Eastern time, and that's not a hyperbolic. That's the truth. Um, it came right down to the wire, and, you know, my, my conversation with J.J., um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I called him first before anyone else had the news. I had given him my word that, that I would do that. Um, and it was short and brief. You know, it was, it was professional. Um, J.J. Under, understood, you know, I, I think – um, he gets it. He knows that uh, it's a business at the end of the day, and, and you have to make difficult decisions sometimes. And, and this was one of those days and one of those decisions for us where we made a decision that was difficult, but we like the decision and, and we think it's going to help us. Rob, uh, this is Evan Dunlap from Orlando Pinstripe Post. Uh, bringing in Duran Lamb, He's, uh, you refer to him here as a, as a combo guard. What does bringing Duran and Baino in do for each one more? Um, another sort of combo guard that you have? Yeah, you know, I think it, it, it gives us some more depth in our backcourt. Um, we were really intrigued with, with Duran during his college days and, and the skill set that he provides. He's, he's savvy. Uh, he can make shots. He can handle the ball. Um, he just does a little bit of everything at, at both guard positions. So we feel like he can help us. Uh, we feel like Baino can help us just with his experience and his veteran presence and you know, for Etuan, I think it impacts Etuan to the extent that uh, those guys do or don't beat out Etuan for minutes. You know, one thing that, that Jock always says is uh, he's going to play guys based on merit and, and based on uh, who's working and, and who's putting in the time in practice and, and who's producing. So it'll be an equal opportunity uh, situation, I'm sure. Rob, since you've been here, you've only had to trade the franchise player the most improved player in the league, and now one of the top six men in the league. What pressure now do you feel under since you've made some headway to to rebuild, to get this thing going in earnest um, from fans, media, whatever it is? Um, what's your feeling right now? Well, I can tell you that I started dyeing my hair two months ago. It's actually gone gray. Um, on the entire back side of my noggin. So, um, but, you know, what, what I can tell you is, you know, this is a pressure business. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. We feel that pressure. Um, we embrace that pressure. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, you, you really have to look at from, a, I think, a bigger picture and a bigger perspective and understand that there are decisions you make that um, you make because you believe in the process. And, and we believe in what we're doing. We believe in the way we make decisions. We believe in the research we do. Um, and, you know, it's, it's our hope that our fans believe in that with us. Rob, you mentioned the fans. They obviously see the turnover that's gone on in the past year. If they're asking what's the end game, do you see a light at the end of the tunnel in a year, two years? What is it for you? You know, I, I think I, I don't know what the light of the tunnel, what that necessarily looks like, but I do know that we're going to continue to bring in players who are about the right things, who want to be here, who embody uh, the right work habits, the right intensity, the right sense of urgency and, and togetherness. So we're going to continue to bring in players who we feel represent the organization the right way and continue to grow together, continue to, um, to gel together and um, over time, you know, become a, a good team.
Rob, can you walk us through the rationale of the Charlotte trade? On the surface, it looks like almost a wash between two guys. And there's a report out there that you may be looking just to wave Hakeem Warwick. Sure. So the, the Charlotte trade, um, you know, we traded Josh McRoberts. Josh didn't have uh, a ton of minutes with us, at least consistently. And we felt it was important to, uh, to move him into a situation where he can play and get some more burn. And so, uh, you know, we decided to, to trade work for him. There were some cash considerations involved in that as well, coming to, to our ledger. So, um, you know, that made the deal more palatable for us. And, and it allows us to, uh, you know, to explore now with an open roster spot, maybe some players out of the, out of the D League or the minor league system that, that we may want to take a look at. Uh, because of JJ's situation as a free agent, we're now a team basically would be renting him until he makes a decision. Were you got, did that impede you guys in maybe trying to get a first rounder from somebody? <laughs> That's a good question. I think probably so. You know, I think there was um, we had a lot of talks where we, you know, we could have gotten a, a first round pick. Uh, we felt that that with with Tobias being a first round pick and, and Duran as someone we value as a first round caliber, you know, you know talent. Uh, we felt that that was satisfactory for us, but I, you know, I, I would imagine if you're playing, uh, you know, role reversal and you're the other team, I, I think you would have some concern that, you know, there are no assurances that that JJ would stay uh, with the team. So I think that risk was such that, uh, you know, teams wanted to mitigate it by not including it first. Um, Rob, do you have any concerns or worries about fan? Response in the form of maybe not coming to games. The team's unfortunately not winning right now, and you just traded the fan favorite. So, what's your concern there, if any? You know, we feel like we have a lot of fan favorites that are starting to to come to the surface. Um, we got guys we believe in. We got guys that, that we uh, are proud of and, and feel like can really grow into becoming new fan favorites. So. Um, I understand that, that, that the emotional aspect of it is raw, and, and you, can, you can feel that, and I, I certainly understand that. And, you know, my hope would be that our fans continue to, to stick with us and, and believe in what we're doing as much as we believe in what we're doing because uh, we're, we're confident that we're moving in the right direction. Rob, I'm not exactly sure how it would have had to work out, but was there ever a possibility of an extension for J.J.? Or You know, rules don't permit that based on the, the structure of – of JJ's contract. Uh, Rob, uh, there was, seems to be a little bit of overlap between Tobias and Maurice, both solid wing guys, good rebounders, but not without um, great outside shots. What do you see? How do you see Tobias fitting in relative to Maurice and for your team going forward? Well, I'd say the the main overlap is they're both from New York, so um, you know we see him as different players. We see him doing different things and, and in fact I think they can complement each other you know fairly well and, and our scouting staff felt the same way and you know our, our staff uh, did an incredible job throughout the entire trade deadline preparing us keeping us organized and ultimately leading us to this decision so uh, we feel that that Tobias and, and Mo complement each other you know Mo is someone who we see continuing to to develop on the defensive end of the floor as well as the offensive end of the floor. And the same can be said with, with Tobias. So uh, we don't necessarily see a lot of overlap. Um, and, and both players, because of the type of workers they are, we, we feel like they'll continue to improve their their shooting ability. Well, I'll piggybacking on what um, Brian talked about was, uh, you know, you got Ryan, Dwight, and now JJ gone. How much are you looking forward to being a quote-unquote buyer? So you can make some moves and bring in some some big time talent, some veteran talent, some guys that are proven in this league. Yeah, you know, do you look forward to doing that? Yeah, it's a process. You know, it's it's a process. You, uh, you know, you can't cut the grass until you have grass that's you know grown. So we uh, we certainly are always going to be opportunistic. You know, like I said a few minutes ago, and and right now we feel this is the right course of action. This is the right uh, methodology to use to to lay a foundation and. And to really build a, a robust program, and um, again, we believe in what we're doing. Uh, 
Well, we feel like we've been bringing in talent. We'll get there. They may already be here. Adam Papa Giorgio, Magic Basketball Online. Uh, Rob, when do you expect your three new Milwaukee acquisitions to contribute on the court, whether that be tomorrow, Saturday, or after that? Well, the, the plan hopefully is to is to bring them in um, tomorrow to get their medical evaluations out of the way. So the plan will be to do that, and then hopefully they'll be able to uh, suit up for us, you know, as soon as possible. No, that's a good question. I don't I don't know that. George ha George has those. Rob, isn't it the irony in this situation that? Both J.J. and Ryan really fit into what you guys are looking for as players and people. But the situation, mostly because of where they were in different stages of free agency and what they can get them in the market, yeah. didn't that, that that really close the door on, on both of them? Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, Ryan and J.J. are, are great guys. They're about what we want to be about. And, you know, I think the thing I, I would say to you, Brian, is that, you know, we feel like we have a, a group of men in our locker room who are about those same things. And over time, you know, I think our fans and I think this community will will learn to appreciate and, and uh, recognize and identify with that. So we have those guys who have those similar traits right now. And it's part of the business you have to make. Again, you have to make hard decisions sometimes when it comes to, matching up your value to dollar ratio and you know whatever you want to call it and and sometimes sometimes you got to make decisions that that may not be the most popular but you believe are, are best for the organization with the number of points that JJ has been putting on the board how long do you think it's going to take for one of these new guys to step in and fill his shoes hopefully not too long you know we uh, I think the the good thing is that there's opportunity now for for some of our some of our guys to uh, increase their production, to increase their opportunity to produce. So, you know, clearly JJ scored a lot of points, was having a great season for us, and and we're going to have to find um, someone to pick up that slack. It may be one person, it may be a group of guys, but I think that that the idea of, of playing unselfish, playing together, playing for each other, you know, the things that that Jacques is constantly stressing, I think that lends itself well to recouping some of that uh, production loss.